Baseball in Italy. An unexpected combination. Light years away from the spectacle of American baseball. Light years away from million dollar contracts. Light years away from the fame and entertainment that stamp baseball as America's national pastime. In order to better understand the condition of Italian baseball, we must consider the numbers. In Italy, there are 450 clubs and around 50,000 players registered with La Federazione Italiana Baseball e Softball, the Italian Federation for Baseball and Softball. While that may seem like a lot, there are over 60 million people in the country. In all of Italy, there are fewer baseball players than residents in my hometown of San Remo. In comparison, il calcio, or as Americans call it, soccer, has nearly 72,000 teams and 1,400,000 players registered to the Italian Soccer Federation, including over 14,000 professionals and 62,000 coaches. For every baseball player, there are nearly 30 soccer players, which does not even include the large majority of Italians who only play recreational soccer. I don't even know what to say. In Italy there is soccer. And if it's not soccer, it's soccer. If you look at an Italian sports newspaper, you will see that, out of 20 pages, 18 are about soccer. I come from an old city in San Remo. We were born with the idea of being different from everyone else. Because I live in a city that is 1,000 years old, we are nothing like those from the new part of the city. I love playing a sport that is different from the others. Being able to get people to talk about this game and this city to the mayor, to all the other organizations in San Remo, makes me really happy. From nothing, we were able to build a thought that until that moment had never existed. There is no doubt that it is different from other sports. And for this, the curious people, and I would add, the intelligent people, wanted to understand what it was. I have friends that came from school with me. There's my friend Claudio, who had a restaurant in New York. And when he came to visit me, he came to the field because he didn't believe that he had an Italian friend who actually played baseball. He took photographs with his wife and kids to show his friends in New York that he had Italian friends who played and thought about baseball. I became very involved in the world of baseball simply by chance. I have always played soccer, so when my son's school convinced him to play baseball, I wasn't very happy. I didn't even consider it to be a sport. So instead, I told him to go play soccer. My son tried to play soccer like I asked, but he just couldn't get into it. You know, as a parent, you can't force your children to be interested in something they don't like. So he turned to baseball, and eventually, I fell in love with it too. Now I even watch the children's games, and it gives me more satisfaction than soccer ever did. Immediately they made fun of me. They said, where do you think you're going with this game here in Italy? It doesn't exist. But when I started to show them the results, they respected me. And to think, the story could have been different. In the 1930s, 
the Italian Physical Education Academy of Rome, sent a group of young men to the United States to gather information on the game of baseball. When they returned, they demonstrated this new sport in Rome and also in other cities, including the small town of San Remo, where I was raised. However, these initiatives were suspended in the late 30s for political reasons. Baseball was too American and therefore not considered in line with the fascist regime. Here is the battle line when these films were issued. Heavy fighting in the mountains in and around Casino. Now, taking the Nazis completely by surprise, the Allies hurl their fleet upon Natuno and Anzio, points behind the German lines, 30 miles south of Rome. In Natuno, the team was formed after the arrival of the American soldiers, where where many boys became close with the sport, out of curiosity. There were these soldiers, these American soldiers, and they played this game. I was so impressed at the speed, the speed at which they caught the ball and threw it back to the bases. Ultimately, this speed and precision got me really interested really enthusiastic, and I became really passionate about the game. It was a sport that was not well known, not like now with all the newspaper and television coverage. Because of this, they were intrigued and started to form their own teams. The same thing happened in Emilio-Romagna, where Marcello Malerbi was. He came from from Ferrara and brought with him his glove and his passion for baseball. In 1950, he formed the first baseball team in San Remo. There wasn't a place to play. Our first championship was at the horse tracks. The horse tracks. The ground was full of rocks. It was hell. And the players actually risked hurting their faces. Those few balls we had came unsown because the ground was so horrible. And so we learned how to sew the balls. We were actually sewing. Every time we used them, we had to re-sew them after. If we didn't, we wouldn't have any to play with. We only had two or three at most. We made equipment with the materials we had. For example, guards we made from gutter pipe. Sheet metal, you know, like on a roof. We took soccer shin guards, hooked them together, and put them on whoever was catcher. For a mask, we used a fencing mask. As a chest protector, we asked a tailor for pads that they put in the shoulders of jackets. We used huge strips of the material. These are all the resources we had. So it's what we used for our equipment. Thus, San Remo baseball began. But the hardships, Malerbi, and the first San Remo players faced during the founding years persisted. Into the 70s, the team struggled even finding a place to practice. Basically, we trained behind a parking lot in the former flower market. It is a place that isn't a place. It is a place where in the afternoon, no one ever did anything. So all the leftovers in life that were in the city ended up there. Drug addicts, lost people, and those who wanted to learn baseball. Amid countless battles for money and sponsors, San Remo baseball players have continued fighting to keep their passion alive. What we do is what those one, 
two or three managers do. Scrape together 4,000 euro from a sponsor, 2,000 from another to keep going. We keep going forward from one year to the next. I hope for the most part, it continues like that. What changed? Not a thing. We do not have money. We have a field that we can't afford to maintain properly, and we don't even have public restrooms. We have impossible travel expenses. Starting from San Remo, the closest airport is two hours from here. Think about that. Four times a year, every year, for two days, we go to Sicily. When we go, we seem like such a ragtag bunch. The few funds we had are always invested in transfer players. When we met at the airport, we would see teams dress nice. But us? We would always look like such bums. But we were a really good team, so we were satisfied anyway. We had a lot of talent. After 1982, the year Scotty arrived to coach us, things changed a little bit. When I was playing baseball uh, in America for a junior college, two recruiters came from San Remo and asked me to play. And uh, I said, yeah, I didn't know too much about Italy, but uh, I, I definitely said, yeah, let's do it. It is a little difficult for Italians to understand 100% love for this game because we are used to other sports. We play soccer, 11 versus 11. There's a goal, there's a winner, you can tie. None of these exist in baseball. Baseball is a game from America and to hear some new things, some new fundamentals, for them to hear some new things I think was important to them and so uh, they respected me right away. I respected them right away with the hard work that they put in. We now had a teacher, a person who loved baseball and who taught us love for this sport that isn't easy to transmit to Italians. Practices were intense and games were intense and, uh, and the team responded here. We were in Serie C when I came here, which is a pretty low level. And I think when I left, we were in Serie A, if I'm not mistaken, which is the top level. So uh, I think that I had something to do with that, but the players worked hard and played together as a team, which was beautiful to see. And I think that was uh, the main reason. Despite this new motivation and the new perspective on training brought by Scotty, the players of San Remo Baseball still must split their lives between the game they love and the jobs they need to leave. E questo è il mio lavoro. Quello che mi guadagna da vivere. Questo è l'ascensore. Che cos'è che fai di preciso? Io faccio l'ascensorista. Monto, riparo, cambio, strutturo e... e ascensorista. Faccio tutto quello che ha a che fare con gli ascensori, con i montascale per i disabili, le seggioline che salgono su a bordo macchina, non so se le avete mai viste. Uh -huh. E il bordo scale. Questo è il quadro, quello è l'argano e... ed è quello che mi dà i soldi per mangiare per vivere per poter venire a giocare a baseball. Quindi il baseball è veramente solo una grandissima passione. Sì, sì. <ride> sì, sì. Anche perché con il baseball ci ho solo rimesso. <ride> Parlo di, di soldi, eh, poi chiaramente di piaceri no. Però di soldi, io penso che a Sanremo che abbiano fatto i soldi. Spero che ci sia quello che sai anche tu, ma per il resto non credo che siamo... Nessuno ci ha fatto, ci ha, ci ha vissuto. Ci ha, 
Non, non ci vivevi di baseball, non ci vivi a San Remo. Allora ho fatto scendere 5 rumeni, un tedesco, un francese. Non avevano i biglietti? No, erano proprio stronzi, che è diverso. È impossibile, se non hai un figlio che ti permette di avere la paternità. Non si può. Ti fai lavorare a turni e a turni a scalare. Quindi sei riposo ogni sei giorni e quindi sabato e domenica non sei a casa. Non ti puoi allenare e ingrassi tanto perché sei sempre fuori. A lack of funds and players forced to prioritize jobs over the team are not the only constraints Sanremo baseball faces. The younger players are often compelled to leave Sanremo to pursue more fulfilling careers. Nowadays, we develop the players and when they can't find a job here, they leave and they do not come back. We are always losing players, sometimes the whole team. Today, everyone is a student. In San Remo, there are no universities. There were four players that had to leave town because of this. It is a never-ending cycle. We develop the players, then we lose them. We develop, then we lose. You have to work with what you have. All we have is us and you have to try to do what you can. So, you know, yes, it's a problem, but uh, you can overcome that problem. There was a period when we got quite a few players, when we had a little bit more money. Americans, South Americans, and with them, we were able to fill the holes left by the Italians. For our needs, these players were excellent. Then, little by little, as the champions ran out, our skill level diminished. Now, we are in the second division. In order to be more competitive, we need funds, funds, and even more funds. These trying times for the Sanremo team, while seemingly insurmountable, were shaken by a baseball miracle. Here's the stretch and the pitch on the way to Alex Liddy. Swing and a drive down the left field line. Going, going. It is Grand Salami time. Get out the right bread and mustard, Grandma. It is Grand Salami time. The Italian Stallion with a Grand Salami. He clears the bases. His third home run of the season. It was a rocket. Line drive over the hand operated scoreboard down the left field line, and it's now the Mariners five and the Rangers nothing. What a shot by the San Remo Smasher! Alex, born and raised in San Remo, incredibly reached the major leagues. The San Remo Baseball Club had produced a professional player who now plays in America with the best of the best. The passion of this small Italian baseball team helped a young player achieve an impossible dream. I always asked myself, and continue to ask myself today, how? How is it possible that in 50 years, not one Italian who plays in Italy was ever able to enter the major leagues. A highly touted prospect making his major league debut on a September night is not all that unusual, but one recent debut was unusual. In fact, this debut was a baseball first. She's the first Italian born, raised and developed player to play in the major leagues, so we're happy to have him here and the kid can play. Oh, that. It brings tears to my eyes. It brings tears to my eyes. He's worked so hard to get to where he's at right now. And I think that uh, it gives the Italian players a dream, what to look for, what to work for. And he's opened up some roads for some other Italians. 
uh, I was just a small part of his development when he was a young kid. And uh, I taught him the fundamentals of the game when he was 10, 11, 12, and gave him the dream that you're gonna be coming in America because I saw how he enjoyed the game and I saw his uh, development with instruction, never had to tell him twice anything. So uh, Alex Liddy, uh, the way he's representing Italy in America is, is, it brings tears to my eyes. It's something mind blowing to think that it all started right here. I coached him when he was only a little boy. Alex took in everything that had movement. Always attentive. That's how Liddy learned. The credit of giving him an opportunity to be here is mine. But the credit of becoming what he did is all his. As for me, with Alex Liddy, more than anything, more than teaching him the techniques, which his dad knew more than I, I taught him teamwork. Like most small star athletes, they basically think the team needs them, but we all know they need the team. Yeah, I think everybody from where I'm from helped me. If I'm here, because of them too, because I mean, they, they helped me a lot growing up and everybody give me tips growing up and get, that's why I got better got better every day because all the guys who were in my town in Saremo start from Cecoli to Vincenzo to Malerbi to Filippo to my dad used to be my coach to all those guys they were around, they were around me and they all of them teach me something I realize now that he had enormous perseverance it was kind of a gamble that he went to the United States because, honestly, many parents would have been scared to send a little 14-year-old boy overseas. Liddy is a fairy tale in the sense that he is realizing his dreams, but if this fairy tale hadn't come true, it would have been an overall disappointment, and the boy would have been, I mean, what would he have done with his life? It was an amazing thing that he was able to do this, but if it didn't work out, how is he going to come back to Italy? What would he have done? Uh, about regrets, I, I tried to live my life, not my life, but my baseball life, where I don't have to have regrets, because probably it's one of the worst feelings ever, having regrets, so I give 100% on the field, and I work harder than anybody to, to be as good, I can, I, I, as good as a baseball player I can be, so, after when I'm done playing, I don't have regrets. I knew I have, I, that's, all, that's all I got, and I've lived my life good. He is the old John Houseman. He earned a spot on this team. Hit it hard, fair ball down the line. Ichiro scores, tie ball game at 2-2. Making his way to third is Montero. Lydian with an RBI double. 2-2 two -two is the score here in the third inning. No, I don't think I'm an exception. I'm just a, I consider myself a, a hard worker and I take my job serious. And I take this game serious, I respect this game a lot. And uh, I don't think I have any special tools or, over, or any, over any other people nearly. But I think I have a lot of passion for this game that make me going far. All the odds are against this small team from San Remo. Italian baseball is unheard of. Funds are non-existent. Players constantly live. But despite the obstacles, the team persists. These players exhibit such passion, such love for the game, that San Remo baseball still survives. I left San Remo years ago to live in the US. When I return to my hometown, nothing has changed. The magic is still there. I look at the players today and see the family I left behind. They have become more than just a baseball team. 
Together, this group has kept a dream alive. A dream of passion and endurance, trials and triumphs. Every day, these players slug it out, keeping the magic of San Remo baseball alive. I am not a manager. I have never been a manager. I am someone who works on the field. I have never been someone doing things in the office. I don't like it. I do this because I love it. Otherwise, I never would have done it. Baseball taught me so many things that in Italy don't exist in sports. Because it is a game that is so mental, it opens up perspectives that don't exist in typical Italian sports. You could be a swimmer or a tennis player a skier, but what you find in baseball, you can't find anywhere else. Even if uh, I don't have a chance to speak a lot about my, my city in Sarajevo, I'm always proud to tell everybody that I'm from Sarajevo and that's where I came from, that's where I grew up and I'm proud that I have a chance to play with uh, all those players from Sanremo. They're really good friends of mine and my family. And it was a special moment in my career, even if I was younger. But like I told you earlier, it was incredible. The atmosphere was there when I was younger. And I don't think you can duplicate that anywhere. We are still there on the field to see the games, or as coaches, or managers. We were all part of this team from San Remo that came all the way to the top in Series A in 1980. And we are still a part of this team today.